Good morning and welcome to Incarnation. Before we get started, I'm just going to, hopefully you've all picked a, a, a book of common prayer as well as a song sheet. So I'm just going to go over the pages that you'll need to either put a bookmark in or your finger in, in your book of common prayer. The first is that our service will begin on page 123. So that's where we're going to start out. Um, the collect for the day, which is proper 16, you're going to find that on page 619. I'll give you a second to get there. And then the third place that you're probably going to want to put a finger or a bookmark is Psalm 16, and that's on page 283. So again, the three places you're probably going to want to mark are page 123, um, Colic for Proper 16 on page 619, and then page 283, that's Psalm 16. I'm going to just take a moment and let us quiet our hearts before we get started. Please stand. On page 123. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now, now and, forever. and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join me in praying the collect for purity on page 124. Almighty, Almighty God, God to, you to you all hearts are open, open all desires open. known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please remain standing for our opening song.
I invite you to pray with me, proper 16. It's on page 619 of your prayer book. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as we pray for our children. Lord God, we are so thankful that you have given this church so many children to nurture in the faith. I pray that as these glowing days of summer are closing for them, that the health and strength that they've regained in the presence of their families and through the ministering of your Holy Spirit would be carried into this next school year. Be with them, surround them with your presence, shield them from the days that may be ahead and the challenges that may be ahead. Give us wisdom as we nurture them and lead them in the faith. Give us wisdom. Amen. And now let us sing. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God's word together. A reading from Joshua, chapter 24, verses 1 to 2a and 14 to 25. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living, but as for me and my household, you will, I will, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did these great sights in our, signs in our sight. 
He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed, and the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us in praying Psalm 16, which may, may be found on page 283 of your BCP. Preserve me, O God, for in you I ha have I put my trust. O my soul, you have said unto the Lord, You are my Lord, I have no good apart from you. All my, all my delight is upon the saints who are on the earth and upon those who excel in virtue. But those who run after another god shall have great trouble. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, neither make mention of their names with my lips. The Lord himself is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. You shall maintain my lot. The boundaries have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will thank the Lord for giving me counsel. My heart also chastens me in the night season. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand, therefore I, sh therefore I shall not fall. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For you shall not leave my soul in the grave, neither shall you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You, you shall, shall show, show me the path of life, life. In, in your, your presence, presence is the fullness of joy, and, and at, at your right hand there is pleasure forevermore. This is a reading from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 21. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But fornication and impurity of any kind or greed must not even be mentioned among you as is proper among saints. Entirely out of place is obscene, silly, and vulgar talk, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no fornicator or impure person or one who is greedy, that is, an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be associated with them. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, 
making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. This is the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And when many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones who did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Lord Christ. Please have a seat. Well, my name is Liz Gray, and I'm uh, one of the pastors here. And it's lovely to have you all worshipping with us this morning in relative cool, perhaps, it might be described. Hello, Zoomies. It's good to have you with us as well. Always delightful to know that we are in multiple places. I wonder how many of you watched any of the Olympics recently. I don't know. Uh, Zoomies, you can put your hands up as well. I don't know if there's some of you, but I guess... Most of us watched at least something or saw photographs of people kind of excelling physically in all sorts of ways, whether they jumping around or hitting balls or shooting things. I don't know, so many ways that people could do extraordinary things with their bodies. And I don't know how many of you also, perhaps at the beginning of the pandemic, had, if you've read that book by Malcolm Gladwell, 10,000 Hours Makes You an Expert, Whether at the beginning of the pandemic you thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to have all this time, I'm going to just become an expert something, you know, expert piano player, expert, I don't know, writer of poetry, expert something. But my guess is that for most of us, although we may have had 10,000 hours pass by over the last year and a half, we haven't yet achieved Olympic-style excellence in anything. But kids, as you are sitting and thinking this morning, I was wondering about um, what you like to do and what the things are that you think you're pretty good at or you'd like to be better at. And maybe it's dancing or drawing or writing poems, all the things that we like to do. And I thought perhaps while I am talking for the next 15 minutes or so, you may like to write a poem or reflect on something. Maybe you even just look at your hand and marvel at how amazing it is. Aren't hands incredible, the ways they can do things, they can throw things, they can draw, they can write? So maybe you would like to just think and thank God today about for your hand or some other aspect of the way that your body moves or does things. And I'm going to talk some more about our bodies in a little while, but before I do so, I just want us to pause for a moment. There was a line in that psalm that we heard read earlier, which where the psalmist talked about the boundaries, boundaries of his life falling in pleasant places. And this may indeed have been the psalmist's contextual situation on the day when he sat down and wrote that psalm. And perhaps that's the way you're feeling today about your life in Nova, as we are in extraordinary pleasant times. 
When you think of all that we have, the security and safety, the thing, air conditioning, books, school, education, relative wealth, our surroundings are indeed very, very, very pleasant. But today we want to just remember our brothers and sisters around the world, and particularly in Afghanistan and Haiti, and places where we have seen fires and floods. And we want to remember every country that we pray for week by week through this very long pandemic, through global financial instability, global warming. Being in a pleasant place is simply not the experience of many, many people today. And so for the psalmist, that might have been his experience, but I think it is also a promise, a promise of what is to come. And we hold on to that hope that for each of us there will be a day when we experience literally living in pleasant places. But perhaps for many of our friends around the world today, they might turn to a different psalm, perhaps Psalm 49. Surely, surely God will redeem my life from Sheol. And so today, as we remember our pleasant places, and we'll be talking more about that in a moment, let us too just remember that is not the case for many. Many this week will die in violence from man or climate, not knowing a place of pleasant life. And so today, we contrast our ease and surroundings, and we should be very, very grateful. And also mindful that we are in the situation because we had the blessing of being born here. Many of you, I'm sure, are also very diligent and hardworking, but we are people of privilege and opportunity and therefore responsibility. And so to this week and in the days ahead, I urge us all to pray diligently, to find ways to seek and to serve our neighbors with every ounce of our multiple and plentiful resources. And we'll keep you posted as we think about ways, perhaps, that we could be reaching out to the fresh wave of refugees who are going to come to this country. But also I urge you to watch and pray as the news comes up day by day. I came across this prayer this week for Afghanistan, and I'm going to pray it now. For those who are fleeing sanctuary, for those who are staying safety, for those who are fighting peace, for those who are breaking comfort, and for those who see no future, hope. We pray these things in the name of Jesus for our brothers and sisters around the world, but particularly for those in Afghanistan today. Amen. And so now we turn to a rather different topic. We look at that, again, look at that passage from Ephesians today. And uh, mindful that we have the capacity to pause and reflect and consider. And so Paul in Ephesians, the first half there, asks us to consider our physical bodies. Now, as you look at your own physical body today, I don't know, it might be somewhat a delightful thing or something problematic. Perhaps you're somebody who likes your body. Perhaps there are aspects of it that are okay, but others that you're not so keen on. Perhaps the things that you want to be different, you'd love to be able to dance differently or bend or move and be, express yourself with more grace. Perhaps you experience times when your body is simply doesn't work the way you would like it to. There are imbalances in chemicals or muscles or bones. None of us have perfect bodies, and we all do somewhat, I'm going to use the word battle, even that doesn't, that seems a bit aggressive, with our bodies in different ways. And we live in a world which has death and decay, and we see our brokenness in our physical beings. And perhaps there are also ways that, although there are things that we know and understand about our bodies, and perhaps scientists and doctors have told us things which allow us to address them in different ways, but there are also things that we can't see in our bodies, especially the ways that they store memories and trauma, or even complex trauma. And in fact, the complex trauma that some of our bodies have stored up might not be the result of something we have actually personally been engaged with, but it might be something which is to do with generations 
of systemic neglect or poverty in our family lines, or the lasting legacy of a variety of things through our genealogical lines. And there is a frustration of not always understanding the ways our bodies are working or what's going on below the surface. And again, we're mindful of our brothers and sisters around the world who may indeed even today be experiencing deep trauma in their bodies, physical, emotional, and spiritual. The way that memories root deep down and how all of us need space and time and care and a way to process in a safe space with safe people to deal with those streams of trauma in our bodies. And since God first engaged with Adam and Eve and they, he gave them an opportunity to live in a life of trust with him and they chose to turn, they chose to turn from trusting God and they chose to follow their own way. And at that point, shame was invited into the Garden of Eden and God gave the man and the woman consequences and he told the woman I'm going to greatly increase your pangs in childbirth in pain you shall bring forth children and to the man he said cursed is the ground because of you in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life by the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground for out of it you are taken you are dust and to dust you will return this reminder that when humans when people turned to chose to turn away from God we became people who would experience pain and brokenness and that we would reveal the consequences of that sin in our ultimate disintegration and death to dust we will return and so if Christians have tried to sort out what it is that God says about our bodies and the things they do there's often a sign of kind of like danger alert and instead of your body is a beautifully integrated part, part of you with your mind and your heart, instead sometimes there's come across a message of your body is bad, your body is dangerous, your body is sinful and harmful. There's been a lot of teaching, sadly also in the church, with things like the purity movement or I Kiss Dating Goodbye with Joshua Harris, times where instead of promoting a joyful delight in our bodies, there's been much which may have come from good intentions initially, but much that then turned to shame. Our surrounding culture also can give very strong messages about boys and girls and how they should be and how they should view their bodies. And all too often, we have uncritically simply absorbed those messages about the ways that we should look at our bodies. And to be fair, that passage in Ephesians gives a whole chunk of things which Paul is suggesting we should pay a lot of attention to. I think I counted 15, but they were, came into three kind of categories. He said, first of all, there's stuff you mustn't do. And the, the big word at the beginning was don't fornicate. Okay, don't have sex with people outside of marriage. I agree, sex should be something which is confined to a committed, faithful, monogamous, mar marital relationship. And then he also said, things we mustn't consume. The way Paul put it was, don't be greedy. Well, these days I think you can be greedy in lots of different ways. You can be greedy in the stuff you eat and the stuff you drink, but you can also be greedy in the things that you consume with your eyes and with your body and with your hands. So Paul says, watch your appetites. Watch your appetites. Don't eat and drink the wrong stuff or the wrong amount of stuff. Be careful what you consume. And then the third category Paul mentions, the things that we mustn't say. Paul urges us to watch our tongues, how we engage with those around us. And of course, he highlighted speech, but we could add on a social media and Facebook and emails and all these other ways that we communicate with each other. And so we must watch what we do, we must watch what we consume, and we must watch what we say. And I guess for all of us, we've all done and said some of those things. So what next? Are our bodies simply bad and dangerous? But listen to what else Paul says. He says, for once you were in darkness, but now you are in the light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. There is a deep reminder that God cares for us and he cares, cares about our bodies. He made our bodies. 
but he calls us to live in the light. And perhaps this is another way we can look at that verse from Psalms. He calls us to live within boundaries. And he has set boundaries around us. He has set physical boundaries for our bodies that will enable them to live in the light. And God sees us inside and outside, and his desire is for us to live well in our situations. And of course, there is evil in our world, and we experience that in different amounts and ways wherever we live. But how do we respond right now with this news about our bodies? First of all, let's just sit there for a moment and just remember the creation story. Gave God gave us these bodies. In Genesis, it says he made us and we were very good. And then in Eden, God gave so many yeses. He said, yes, you can eat and drink everything. Yes, you can eat, go anywhere. Yes, you can commune with me in the evenings. Yes, you can walk and talk. Just this one thing, trust me. Trust me, leave that tree alone. God was asking his people to live in the goodness of what he was surrounding them with, but to understand that there were boundaries. And so Paul gives us some no's, but he also gives us then a ton of yeses as well. Paul invites us to be imitators of God as beloved children. He invites us to live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice. He invites us to be thankful to be daily thankful for the things that we have been given and the things that we're surrounded by. He invites us to live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. He invites us to pay attention, to look for what is good and right and true. I love that halfway through this, Paul then sort of shouts out, wake up, O sleeper, which was probably an old baptismal hymn. Wake up, O sleeper. We have to take note. We have to be careful, as Paul says, how we live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of our time, understanding what the will of the Lord is. And as Megan read it, that passage ends with the invitation to be filled with the Spirit, an invitation to be grateful and thankful and to sing and to make hymns and psalms and spiritual songs, to make melody to the Lord in our hearts, giving thanks at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul urges us to make some very, very deliberate choices. He instructs us to exercise control over our bodies because our bodies matter and how we tend them matters. Paul tells us to stay inside the very broad lines God has given us, to stay in the light and to be deliberate. But it's not just a grit your teeth, try harder, do the 10,000 hours kind of stuff. Because actually Paul also then says, delightfully, be filled with the spirit. And we are a glorious mix of body and spirit. That's why it's so good that Jesus became a man. He became incarnate. He inhabited one of these things. And it was good and it was very good. And then ultimately, as Jesus went towards the cross, his body was broken by the evil in the world. First of all, by soldiers beating him, and then by being nailed to a cross, and then by taking on our brokenness. Amy preached a couple of really great sermons recently on John chapter 6, and Jesus' message about the bread of life and how he was to be the bread that was to be broken. But even as he did so, in verse 63 in John 6, Jesus says this, It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. So as we examine our complicated relationships with our somewhat messy and functional and dysfunctional bodies, Jesus reminds us, hey, you've got the spirit. You are body and spirit together. You invite my spirit into your life. And that's what brings life. There are consequences in choosing to follow Jesus. And I actually love that passage from Joshua as well, where Joshua always almost seems to be saying to the people, uh, don't do this because you're not up to it. You can't do it. It's going to be too hard. You're going to fall away. It's going to be bad. And the people are so determined and they say, yes, we will follow God. We are going to give him our best. 
And then in Jesus, we hear that he is willing to take us and our best and to fill us with our ho his Holy Spirit so that we can flourish in the places he has put us. And the psalm finishes off with, Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. And with that gift of the Holy Spirit, there is hope for our body as we come, continue to go through this pandemic. And all of our bodies are somewhat weary, even in this good and pleasant land that we live in. Our bodies are tired of being managing safety. Our bodies are tired of looking after others. Our bodies are tired of making choices like wearing masks and getting vaccinated and meeting outdoors. And we want things to be easier and more pleasant, but we continue to watch very carefully what we do, what we eat, what we drink, what we consume, who we have sex with, because it matters. It matters because our bodies were made to coexist with our hearts and minds and they were made good and the spirit is going to be helping us as we make those choices. And there are consequences as we pay attention to our bodies. And so, of course, the one thing is for us to know, the million dollar question, if you like, is how do I know if I'm about to cross one of those lines? How do I know if I'm stepping out of my boundaries? How do I know if this is good or that's bad? Well, you may simply know because there's a stirring of the Holy Spirit in you which nudges you and tells you. I think God is pretty good at doing that. But I would also invite you to talk to somebody, to pay attention, to find somebody you trust and to ask them. Say, I'm feeling a bit uncertain about this behavior. Will you talk to me? Will you help me understand what it is that's good or bad? And a couple of weeks ago, I wrote a blog about my story, and I talked about a woman called Mary, who I went to for the first time with my story. I chose someone I trusted who could give me good advice and could, who could say, this is good, that's not good. So if you're not sure about the boundaries that you're living in, find someone to talk to. It could be Amy or Katie or Josie or me. But bring one person into your story and say, am I behaving in the light here? And be reminded there, there is no shame too deep, no story too hard, no grief too griefsome, no disobedience so irksome. God's heard it all before. Nothing bars you from grace because God loves and cares about your story. And so invite someone to be with you in it. There are a couple of other points I would like you to note in our weekly service. It's good when we come together to pray and to be here. But as I've talked about the Holy Spirit being in our bodies, there are two times in our service where we pay particular attention to what's going on in our bodies. And the first one is when we read the gospel. I don't know if you noticed Katie doing this during the gospel reading, asking God to be in her mind, on her lips, and in her heart. Honestly, I'm so low church, you have to drag me up to do almost anything. But I have become kind of convinced about some of this crossing stuff because it brings attention. It helps us to remember that we want God to be in our heads. We want him to be in our lips. We want him to be in our hearts. And really those are the three areas that Paul was talking about earlier. And so when we do that, we're saying, Holy Spirit, will you come again and be in us? And then there's a moment in communion a little bit later where either I or Katie, when we um, celebrate the communion, we will, we will say, sanctify us also. It's after, just after we've, we've prayed over the bread and the wine, we do this. And we ask, God, will you sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament? and be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. This time we make the big cross. Okay, the other one was called the little cross. This one's the big one. Maybe you're pretty low church as well. I don't know, you've all come from different backgrounds. But can I invite you to do something with your body as we ask God to fill us, as we ask the Holy Spirit to come, as we ask him to be in our hearts and lips and mouths and hearts? Because you know what? He does. And as we consume bread and wine later, or as we ask to be blessed, the Holy Spirit is at work in you and in your body. And the Holy Spirit is 
working to drive out those places of temptation and darkness and brokenness that are in you. So this week, as you find yourself tempted to step outside those pleasant boundary lines, to step out of the light into some aspect of darkness which has you hooked, remember, on Sunday, you ask the Holy Spirit to sanctify your body and do it again. Say, sanctify me, sanctify me and step back into the light. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. As is customary at the end of whatever these are called, sermons, homilies, little thoughts, we take a few moments of silence. And this morning I'm gonna pray for us before we do that. And if you'd like to, I'd invite you to maybe hold out your hands or cross yourself or do something with your body which engages as I pray. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to be in us and in our bodies this week. As always, Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus who was incarnate, who was fleshly like us and who had a body. Thank you that he could tell us that you need flesh and spirit to be whole. And so now, Holy Spirit, will you come and fill our bodies and minds and hearts and tongues? Will you highlight places where we need to confess, where we have indulged in darkness? Will you help us to get into grips with addictions and bad patterns of behavior? Will you help us to even see where there are addictions in our lives, compulsions, habits? And Holy Spirit, will you come into our community? As we engage with one another, will you help us to keep open lines of communication? Will you help us to help each other to stay in the light, to stay in the boundaries that you have given us? And this morning we pray again too. Will you be with the bodies of our brothers and sisters around the world who are physically and geographically not in pleasant places? Will you help them to pay attention to what's happening in their own bodies, minds and spirits? Will you shield, protect and guide them? Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you know and understand us fully. And we ask you, will you reign in each one of our bodies today? Amen.
I invite you to remain standing for the Nicene Creed, which you'll find on page 127 of your Book of Common Prayer. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the prayers. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying here our prayer. For the peace of the whole world, and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. For the people of Afghanistan, we pray for peace. We especially pray for safe passage and miraculous protection for those attempting to travel to the airport in hopes of being evacuated. We pray for the ongoing protection of the life and rights of women and other vulnerable people in Afghanistan, including religious minor minorities such as the Sikhs, Hazaras, and Christians. We also pray for the people of Haiti as they deal with the fallout of this week's earthquake. We ask for the provision of safe sources of food, shelter, and water, and rapid rebuilding of livelihoods and homes. We also pray for our country of the weak Guinea as they fight recent new outbreaks of multiple deadly diseases. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, and John, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. We pray especially this week for Morgan Reed and Corpus Christi Anglican Church. Bless and grow this congregation as they minister to the people of Franconia Springfield. Grow up volunteer leaders around Morgan to help him shepherd this new community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially those who are responding to the COVID-19 pandemic, and those who will be working to reopen schools this fall and teaching, may you protect and guide them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God, first silently and then together aloud. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who truly repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is a propitiation for our sins, not for us only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. I invite you to extend the peace to those around you and a peace to those on Zoom. Well, as I said before, my name's Liz, and a very warm welcome to all of you who are worshipping with us here or online again today. Uh, lovely to have you with us. We've mentioned Afghanistan and Haiti a few times during the service, and just to remind you that there are ways to give financially, and we are giving a gift from Incarnation, but uh, we tend to use an ARDF, the Anglican Relief and Development Fund, I was just wondering what their for is for for a moment there. They are steady and trustworthy and have good long established partnerships in countries around the world. And I did check in with them again this week. So if you go on the ARDF website, and I, the link is on here as well, there is a thing which talks about disaster relief. It doesn't explicitly have a Haiti Afghanistan button, but I have double checked with them. And the money that they're raising at the moment is going to in those two directions. They also have matching grants and things, you know, all the usual kind of um, stuff. So do if you are looking for a place to give, that is a good one. But we're not doing a, a communal gift other than just giving out of our uh, what, the much that we have. So after church today, if you have ever sung in a choir, if you've ever sung a song joyfully and people around you haven't put their hands over their ears, then you count. Um, there's going to be a choir rehearsal grant. Could you wave? Uh, so choir rehearsal is a fairly grand term for um, singing some songs together communally. Uh, it's going to be in the chapel, I think, unless, it, unless there's so many people that it's impossible to be in the chapel, in which case that would be fun as well. But if you fancy just singing with some other people, go along. Grant is a very gentle choir master. He won't, you know, he, he's good at not shaming. He will encourage and delight in bringing glory out of our voices, I guess. Um, then, vestry nominations. We mentioned this last week, and I'll mention it today. You have two weeks in which to nominate people for the vestry. So every year, two people. We have six people in total in our vestry. Every year, two of them roll off. And this year, we have a, a slightly anomalous situation in that we also have Jenny had only filled in a one-year position last year. So we have going to be voting for three people in a few weeks' time. But this is your opportunity, people. Look around, kind of go, oh, they seem like a reasonable person. Feel free to nominate them. If you've seen them serving around here, if you've seen them doing setup, if you've seen them working jolly hard, that's the people we want on vestry. So um, feel free to nominate. There's, I wrote a little blog about it on Tuesday, my letter from Liz. Go back. There's a link in there. You just click on it. You don't have to say to the people, hey, do you, are you suitable? Um, we'll work that out. Okay, so we will decide, work out whether they're members. We, there's various criteria they should fulfill. We'll make sure that that happens. So if you nominate, I don't know, Inez, she's a bit young. Um, Inez, how old are you? 
Seven. Okay, Inez is too young. Don't nominate Inez. But look around at everybody else and you could give them some close thought. So we will pay attention to that list as it forms. But you only have until next Saturday. So especially if you're a member here, I would strongly urge you to nominate people. If you're not a member, segue, uh, you should be. And um, so on September the 19th, we're going to be welcoming new members into our congregation, into our community. And uh, you have to make some really hard promises, like the fact that you'll, I don't know, play nice and that you'll pray for our children. They're not very complicated. They, um, and we would love, if you are committed to us as a com community and you think that we're going to be for this foreseeable future, the community that you worship with week by week, we would encourage you to become members. We know that this is a transient world and you might say, hey, I think I'm only here for a year. That's fine. Become a member and be here for a year and commit and take it seriously. And if you're not going to be a member here, maybe you should be a member somewhere else. Um, it's a good thing to belong somewhere and to feel that connection into a community. So all you have to do is talk to me and then we have a chat and then we decide if it's a good fit for you. Uh, so it's not, I'm, I'm not very intimidating. So do uh, reach out to me if you would like to have that conversation. The other thing we mentioned last week is that David Griffin has uh, been approved for ordination. Woohoo! Big cheer! So uh, we, we're racing to see if we can get 50% of the congregation in a collar within the next five years. So uh, just... You know, watch out, watch out. You might be next. But his ordination will actually be on a Sunday morning, which is slightly unusual, but we thought would be fun. And that's going to be October the 17th. So the bish is coming. He's going to do his bishy stuff. By the way, we have another bish in the congregation today. So you can work out. If you can work out who the bishop is in the congregation today, I'll give you an extra prize. Um, welcome, by the way. <laughs> uh, the Griffins are having quite a big week. Anastasia Grace was safely delivered on Friday. So a uh, huge cheer for Anastasia Grace. If you've got Facebook, sneak on there and you can see a photograph. I got to cuddle her yesterday. Priest privilege. Woo! Um, and she's lovely. So pray for that family as they make all sorts of adjustments to their lives at the moment. And now uh, Amy gave you a heads up last week that we're going to take a moment. Does anyone have a story of where they have seen God at work in this past week or where you've been an agent of seeing joy breaking out or any story really of God at work? Anyone got a brief testimony that they'd like to share? Lee, come on up. Hi, if you don't know me, my name is Lee McAfee, and this spring I started working at an organization called Justice Ventures International, which combats human trafficking in South Asia. It's also an organization that Incarnation supports, so thank you to this church. Uh, and when Amy did this prompt last week, I had that like, maybe I should share this, um, and then it just got stronger through the week, so here I am. So we learned that uh, there was a very large rescue of um, over 20 minor girls who were in um, a sexual exploitation kind of situation in an area that hasn't seen that kind of rescue before. It's a very dangerous place. And um, last week we had a, a call with our, our whole team. So there's about 50 people who are in South Asia. And uh, as they were telling this story for like 20 minutes, we were all just riveted at all the ways that God showed up all the things that had to come together for this to happen, the way that the government was involved in ways they haven't been before. Um, and so it was just very encouraging. Um, and then right after that, we learned that Incarnation is supporting our organization again. So it, uh, just really grateful for that and seeing that in the midst of so many difficult things happening in the world, the ways that, that God is moving. So mm. wanted to share that, that good story. Thank you. Encouraging. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm Paul Gilmer, and um, I was in Afghanistan working for a year, eight years ago. So I was kind of burdened the last uh, few days. And um, so I went to Arlington Cemetery and laid some flowers and looked at a tombstone of someone that. Um, a friend of mine was with when he died in a suicide bombing. Anyway, at the bottom of the grave, it said Isaiah 6-8, which everyone knows, right? 
whom shall I send? Here I am, send me. So I was thinking about that and praying. And um, then at work, we had a volunteer cable and a volunteer request. So this afternoon, I'm going out to the Dulles Expo Center and working um, for whatever happens. I don't know. I guess maybe some flights will come in. So anyway, just an answer to prayer. So happy about that. Thank you so much. Catherine. This one? Oh, okay. Hello. I have a pro bono client who uh, has shown extraordinary resilience in uh, escaping a really dangerous home situation when she was about 12, uh, far down in South America. Knew she had an estranged father here in Virginia and of her own volition got all the way to the United States, was originally eventually apprehended by authorities, uh, but they agreed to temporarily reunite her with her father. And last year we worked with local authorities and were able to get him temporary custody. And I filed all the federal paperwork at the start of this year to begin trying to seek special immigrant juvenile status, or what a lot of you who work with Viola probably just know as CIG, so that she could be eligible, never for citizenship, but at least for a green card. So we filed all this paperwork and thought, you know, I mean, there could be years of waiting, who's to say? But this week, I, I was sitting at my office and got an email from authorities saying that my client had been approved for special immigrant juvenile status. And so just totally out of nowhere went from being in removal proceedings and, and waiting to be sent home to being uh, eligible to apply for a green card and feeling tremendous safety. So we're grateful. Well, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for rescuing people from all sorts of situations. We thank you for the rescue of these miners in Asia. We thank you for those who will arrive on planes, we hope, into safety here from Afghanistan. And we thank you for this girl who is able to be rescued from her situation to come and live here. Father, we're grateful that you are a God who rescues each one of us, and we come to you with grateful hearts. Amen. And now as we come to the table, I invite you, if you would like to give, feel free to do so, either online or on your phone, but also just bring your heart as we come to the table.
come to the Lord's table. We're on page 130 in your BCPs, 130. Walk in love as Christ loved him, us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord, and, and of, of your, your own, own have, have we given, given you. The Lord be with you. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, them up to, the Lord. to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, give to give him, him thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. have a seat. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit, 
to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us, let us keep, keep the, the feast. feast. Hallelujah. Alleluia. We do not presume to come, come to this your table, table O merciful, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, righteousness but in your abundant and great mercies. mercies. We are we not are worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you, you are the same Lord, Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy, Have mercy on, us. on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant, Grant us, us your, your peace. peace. As we invite you to come to the table shortly, there'll be two stations at the front here. And you can just come up and um, if you want to receive communion, just put your hands out like this and we will take a wafer and then tink it and dip it, drop it into your hands. If you don't want to take communion and want a prayer of blessing, just cross your arms like this. And if you want to stay where you are, or if you want communion where you are, just wave and tell one of the ushers. This table is open to all who are baptized and following Jesus, and you are welcome, welcome at it. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I invite my helpers to come up as well.
If you turn to page 137, we will give thanks together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of your body, O Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah, lots of hallelujahs. It's been lovely worshipping with you this morning. Hope you have a really good week. Hope the choir sings tunefully, and we'll see you next Sunday.